Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Aggregate Demand. In this video we're going to examine the concept of aggregate demand in the economy and what we will say is that this is the total spending on all goods and services in the economy and this spending can come from five different areas. The first one is consumption household expenditure. The second one is related to firms and investment. The third one relates to the government and government spending on capital and new goods and services. Plus we have exports represented by X and minus imports represented by M. So all expenditure in the economy we represent by these five different uh, symbols here. Now, in order to examine aggregate demand itself, what we have to do is we have to go through and look at a downward sloping line. So aggregate demand in the economy shows the total quantity of goods and services demanded at any given price. Now, if we want to look at this, we can start at a relatively high price on this curve and we can say that at this part of the aggregate demand curve, point A here, the price level is relatively high at P1, and the aggregate demand, the spending in the economy, is quite low. So we'll put that in as GDP1, the total amount of goods and services being spent on. Now, if we move to point B down here, what we see on the aggregate demand curve is at point B, the price level has reduced. So we've come down here to P2. So a reduction in the price level. And what we see from the aggregate demand curve is that the level of spending on output in the economy has increased. So GDP two in this case, is further along than GDP1. And of course, this is the origin point in here. So as the price level drops in the economy, the spending on goods and services increase. So there is a negative relationship between the price level in the economy and the general overall aggregate expenditure level. So why might this be the case? Well, one of the reasons for this is what's called the real balance effect over here. So the real balance effect looks at the real uh, money balance. So what we have here is the real money balance is the level of money in the system divided by the price level. So money is only accurate and useful for you if it can buy things and there is no point getting a wage of a thousand euro a week if the price of everything is more than that anything that you want so m over p measures real money balances and the real balance effect says that if the price level were to decrease in the economy so price level drops what would happen is the real money balance, the actual purchasing power of your money would increase. So let's see that in real terms over here. The price level in the economy has dropped over here in our graph. So the price level goes down. What this means is that the purchasing power of your money or your wealth goes up. So let's just call that wealth. So the purchasing power of your wealth goes up. What this means is that with more purchasing power and wealth, you can consume more goods and services. And if you consume more goods and services, what we see generally is that the output level and expenditure related to that will go up as well. So this is the real balance effect that when prices go down, the expenditure on output increases. Secondly, we have our competitiveness effect. Now again, there's a little equation for this one. So what you would have to know is something called the real exchange rate. And that is the nominal exchange rate E multiplied by the price in the domestic country 
D-O-M, all divided by the price in the foreign country, the country you're comparing it to. And what this means is, in our economy, price is dropping. So if the price is dropping domestically, what tends to happen in this case here is that the real exchange rate drops as well. So if the numerator in this case drops, well then the overall equation, the real exchange rate will drop as well. So how can we look at this? Well, we come over here and we say again, in our economy, the price level has dropped and that has an impact. What it does is it reduces the real exchange rate so the real exchange rate here and because it reduces or it depreciates the real exchange rate this then has a knock-on impact in terms of your net exports and what it means is if your real exchange rate if it depreciates all of your exports are cheaper and what this means is that you export more and your net exports will rise and if your net exports rise, this will mean that your output level rises as well. So output goes up, that therefore your expenditure on output increases. So what are we saying here? When prices drop, again, spending on output increases. And finally, we have a liquidity or a Keynes effect here. So we have another equation called the Fisher equation, which says that the nominal interest rate, the interest rate you're quoted for a mortgage or savings account, is equal to R, the real interest rate, plus inflation. So what happens here? Well, if the price level is going down, so the price level goes down here, for any given level of the real interest rate, your nominal interest rate will also drop. So when price levels fall, interest rates tend to fall as well. So let's work this through the economy again. For the price level here that has dropped in our economy, what it means is generally the nominal interest rate tends to drop as well. This has a positive impact on consumption and on investment in the economy so positive impact on spending that will cause our aggregate demand to increase which causes output gdp to increase as well so now we have three effects where the price drops in each case and it has a positive impact on the output and spending in the economy through the real balance effect through the competitiveness effect on exports and through the liquidity or Keynes effect in terms of consumption and investment. So that's the reason why we have a negative slope for aggregate demand. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.